Hello, and welcome back to Rails Quest. I've got another exciting Rails 8 feature to show you today, so let's dig right into it. As you can see, I've got the basic Rails app scaffolded here, but I've added a couple things to it. I've added a demo page so that we can explore Rails 8 rate limiting. Rails 8 has had so many awesome new features, and rate limiting I haven't heard as much about. Honestly, it's a really exciting feature, and it comes at a perfect time because Rails 8 has also dropped built-in SQLite caching. So you no longer need to set up an external caching database like Redis or Memcached. And that's really, really nice for the solo developer, for the, the one-man development team that DHH is always talking about. So I'm excited about this video. Oh, and by the way, this sample code is going to be live on my GitHub repository, and I will have a link to it in the description below. So be sure and check it out if you're interested in seeing exactly how the rate limiting works. So without further ado, let's take a look. I have right here the documentation for the rate limit method. So we're going to take a quick look at that, and then we're going to dive into the code, and then I'm going to show you how it works. Hey, quick pause here. I'm Caleb Lape. And if you're watching this video, I'm guessing you're trying to make your software dream a reality. After a decade of building Rails apps for companies like GitHub, I've realized something. Tutorials are great, but they can't replace the experience. Every week you spend piecing together solutions is a week. You could be collecting customer feedback. You could be shipping. That's why I help founders turn their ideas into working MVPs, like the ones you're seeing here, in 30 days or less. No more tutorial hell, no more stuck projects. If you're ready to stop learning and start launching. Click the link in the description. Let's get your idea in front of real customers. Now, back to the video. So here is the documentation for the rate limit method. It's pretty simple. You can find this on api.rubyonrails.org. I've got it on the Edge API, which is the cutting edge, bleeding edge documentation, but I believe it's in either place. And uh, let's check that real quick, actually. Don't want to lead you astray. Okay, yeah, it's in both places. I just like the way the Edge API looks. So that's neither here nor there. Let's take a look at the actual method. Very simple, three parameters here, two, rate limit, two, within, and by. And I will show you that by example in just a little bit, but here are some examples on the documentation. So if we have a sessions controller, we can rate limit the create action to 10 requests within three minutes. So a user shouldn't be able to make more than 10 sessions within a three minute time span. That seems more than reasonable to me. And remember, this is built into Rails, like a brand new app, as long as you don't exclude the built-in SQLite caching, a brand new app could have this set up from day one. Really neat stuff, good for your security. Uh, this is something that you should throw on any controller actions that might benefit from being rate limited, that people might be tempted to abuse. I'll put it another way. You can even set your own cash store if you need to do that on a per rate limit basis. And you can have multiple rate limits within a single controller. So super flexible API, really excited for this to land in Rails. Now let's take a look at the code that I have. We'll just make it a little bit bigger because there is not much code here at all. So this is the whole method call for rate limit for the rate limits demo. We're going to limit the create action to three invocations within three seconds. And the width is a little proc or block or lambda that you can pass to it that is going to get called whenever the rate limit is exceeded. So in this case, we're going to set a flash alert and we're going to redirect to the index for this same controller. And now if we take a look at, this is the entire view for the example. We're just showing the count and we're creating, allowing you to create a new one. Let's just say increment, yeah, increment counter. So, and then we're going to reset the counter. And that's it, that's that's all the code involved here. There is a very minimal, very nice, clean API to work with. I'm really impressed with this one. So this is how it works. You click the button, you can increment the counter. So far I've made three requests. If I start clicking it too fast, I will reach the rate limit and it won't let me start until those three seconds that we defined have passed. And I can reset my counter and I can have all kinds of fun incrementing numbers. And that's pretty much the demo. 
it's very simple, very basic. You can use this any place, like I said, where it would be helpful to your security or the sustainability of your app, the performance of your app to limit access to a particular action or maybe a whole controller within reason. Maybe you could even set a rate limit for your whole app just as a default and set it high enough that it makes sense. You know, we're in an age of AI and scrapers and there's all kinds of use cases for this rate limiting function in that context. For example, just off the top of my head, if you want to avoid scrapers hammering your website or, you know, this applies to anything really, hackers or whatever, there are security measures for the actual malicious intent. But if you have genuine users who are maybe a little bit misguided about how your service works or how you would like them to use it, well, you can just enforce a rate limit policy. On the flip side of that, if you have a resource that is a little bit scarce, for instance, if you're building a chat GPT wrapper, well, those tokens aren't free. If you've got somebody spamming a particular endpoint of your app that uses up chat GPT tokens or open AI tokens, you're going to rack up a big bill with open AI. So you can use this with anything like that that is a scarce resource that you want to just limit access a little bit. Just add an easy way to make sure it doesn't go overboard. Set it to a, a reasonable amount and your users will be happy, most of them. And the, the ones that don't need to be happy are the ones who are abusing your service and you don't want them to be happy abusing your service, right? So it'll keep you happy for sure and it'll keep your wallet happy. So that is the rate limit feature. And like I said, I'm going to post this code and it will be available for all of you to take a look at and even ask questions about it. You can post issues or ask questions on my YouTube channel. I really encourage that. So without further ado, that's the rate limits feature. I plan to talk even more about Rails 8 in the future and let me know if there's anything else you want me to address on the channel or otherwise. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Always looking to post more relevant things to what y'all are wanting. And with that, have a blessed week and I'll see you next time.